Welcome to the Fantasy Football Hub YouTube channel. In this video, I'm joined by FPL expert Vakar, who's going to be telling us six players that we're seeing in quite a few drafts that we need to avoid this season. He is furious, in fact, that they're appearing in any drafts, and he's going to tell us why. Vakar, why are you so angry? Why are you so irate? Why are you forcing me to make this video? What is your agenda against these six players? <laughs> Yeah. Um, thanks for having me, Jack. Hello and welcome to all the listeners and viewers. Yeah, I'm a bit surprised to see these uh, players end up in quite a few drafts, actually. So the threshold that we've set for these highly owned players is basically anyone who has an, has an ownership of 13% or above will be classified as a highly owned player. And yeah, uh, in this video, we would recommend you guys why not to pick these players. Right. Let's begin. Let's jump into the into the first one. The Arsenal goalkeeper. Aaron Ramsdale. Yeah. Why? Why not him? The first one is Ramsdale. Even though in isolation, he strikes me as a good option. But is he really among the best three options from Arsenal that you can pick? I don't think so. I mean, if I was picking uh, Arsenal assets at the start of the season, I think there would be at least four of them, which would I, which I would prefer over Ramsdale. And the fact that Arsenal don't concede as many shots and Ramsdale does, does not make as many saves as the other keepers do, uh, does not really help him. And when you look at the Arsenal defenders, I mean, when you look at their fixtures at the start, you'd expect them to get plenty of the ball, enjoy plenty of possession. So someone like a Gabriel or White or these kind of guys are going to mop up the defensive bonus because you won't expect Ramsdale to see most of the ball. So even though he will represent okayish value at 5 million, I think there are better ways of investing in the Arsenal attack to act because when you look at Arsenal, they're one of the best teams in the league right now to target. When you look at their fixtures, you have to get the best picks from Arsenal. Yeah. I don't think Ramsdale makes the cut. So is it, is it more of a thing that the other Arsenal players are better or is there also a little bit of concern that, that with David Rea potentially moving to Arsenal, Ramsdale's actual actual place in the team may be at stake as well. Yeah, that's a good point. It could happen. It could happen. I mean, rumors have been circulating all summer, so we don't know. We don't know, but yes, that's a good point as well. I was at, I was at the last Brentford game, the last friendly, and um, he was waving to the crowd, is all I'll say. So maybe a goodbye, maybe a goodbye from David. I'm not sure. Okay, that is it for player number one. Okay, player number two is another Arsenal defender. Maybe you just don't like Arsenal players in general, Bakar, but it's Saliba. Why Saliba? I think the question here is Saliba v Gabriel, right? Why is everyone on Gabriel and not on Saliba? Yes, exactly. I mean, I'll keep it short. Gabriel was among the top two defenders for shots inside the box in XG last season. Saliba, in the first half of the season when, when he was fit, he was nowhere near as good in terms of the goal threat when you compared him with, with Gabriel who's faring much better in terms of goal threat. And the fact that Saliba is just coming back from injury and with Champions League coming, you could see him getting rested in the odd game here or there. But I think Gabriel is completely nailed and I don't think he will uh, be rested at all. In fact, when you look at the Arsenal defenders, I think he's, he's the most secure in terms of security minutes. Set plays as well. Because when you look at Arsenal's upcoming opponents, uh, six of their seven opponents um, at the start of the season, they were in the bottom seven XG conceded from set plays. So there's a clear weakness to target yeah. when it comes to Arsenal's opponents. I mean, they they all had frailties from set plays that basically plays into the hands of Gabriel, which makes him a, a far superior pick than Saliba. There we go. I guess if you, if you want to check out even more in-depth stats, then Fancy Football Hub is the place to be this mm -hmm. season as well. If you sign yes. up right now, 50% off, you get access to all Opta stats. And if you do not win your mini league, you get all your money back. An unbelievable deal. Link to do so is down below. I know Bakar will be on it all season long, as always, posting team reveals and, and different articles as well on why not to pick players such as Saliba. But for now, that is player number two. Okay then, Bakar, player number three is Amari Bell. Now, I really like the fact that you have included him in this because... He is in a lot of teams. He was in my team for a, a long portion of preseason. For a period of time, he looked to be one of the, the very few 4 million defenders that was actually going to gonna start. And maybe he still is. I don't know. We don't know loads of, of information about these 4 million defenders, which is why I really want to hear your opinion on why you think we should avoid Bell. Why is that? Name checked him here because I think there are better 4 million defenders to pick. He's nailed, uh, but I think there are better 4 million defenders to pick. Sure. Even from his even from his own team, when you look at uh, Kabore, yeah. he's he's the right wing back. He's the right wing back, and and Luton do create plenty from their wing backs. Even when you, I was reading up on them and watching a few of their highlights from last season, and uh, their wing backs seem to get plenty freedom to go forward. So why would you pick a centre back over a wing back when the wing back is available? Number one, number two, Luton are blanking in game week two, and I see a lot of people picking Bear in combination with uh, with Bell. 
Yeah. And when two teams are blanking, that's that's slightly iffy because even if one defender misses out, then you're uh, you run the risk of playing with ten players. So that's another reason for skipping him. And you know, he's also one of the most popular defenders in the game right now. He's he's the most popular four million defender in the game, which leads me to believe that if things don't work, which I believe they won't with Luton, I think they will struggle. Uh, he could be susceptible to a price drop. So these are the reasons behind my thinking. So there we go. You're not saying that he's not nailed on or you don't think he's going to play. It's more that there are better options at that price bracket, according to you. Exactly. Which is, which and, and, be from better, better, and from better teams as well. I mean, Burnley yeah. uh, are better side. Paul Rock is, is more attacking. Kapoor is more attacking. So that's the reason. So then if I was to ask you for your, for your top two 4 million defenders, say you were to have two 4 million defenders, who would you go for right now? Any of the two from the three that I've spoken okay. about are fine. Okay. I think any two are fine. I don't think there's much to split them. But not Amari Bell. Fair enough. Okay, next up, Bakar is... Wow. I actually feel kind of sad. That, that Trippier has made this list because he was so good last season, but he's nowhere to be seen this year. Why is that? Explain to us why someone that was so high scoring last year and just performed so well should be nowhere near our teams this year. Simply because of the fixtures. I mean, when you look at their fixtures, they're playing Aston Villa, Brighton, Liverpool and Man City in their opening four fixtures. Now that is not a, that is not a fixture schedule you'd want a defender for, let alone a 6.5 million defender for. I'm not saying he's a bad pick. He's a, he's a great pick. His numbers last season were incredible. They were on par with Trent, if not better, actually. But for me, this season to begin with, 6.5 million is not worth the outlay and they're far, far better defenders to pick at this point in time. He's someone we can perhaps look at jumping on after game week four. Yeah, well, that makes sense. Especially once we have an idea of how Newcastle are playing and and maybe even we can sort of wait and watch um, depending on how they're fading in the Champions League and depending on how much Eddie Howe is rotating. Yeah, very valid. I, th I think that's the thing that we need to remember with Trippier is that no one for one second is saying that he is a bad FPL pick. I mean, clearly he's a very, very good one. But with those fixtures, even Villa at home is not a great fixture defensively. But yeah, City away, Liverpool at home, Brighton away. doesn't get much worse than that. The three fixtures defensively anyway. So uh, yeah, want to have a look at, as you say, and, and keep in the back of our minds on our watch list. Ready to come in at any point, maybe with a fixture swing in game week five. But for now, Trippier, one to avoid. Okay, next up, we have a new signing. Not to the league, but to the Liverpool midfield. And we're not entirely sure what's going on there right now. So why do you think McAllister... Bakar is not a player that we should be including in our drafts. Yeah, he's in roughly 13.5% of the squads right now at the time of recording. And I think that's a surprise. I think that comes down to two factors. A, he's playing for a big team. And B, uh, the fact that uh, he did well last season. People sort of expect the same trend to continue. But I, I don't think that will be the case because McAllister was on penalties for Brighton last season. I don't think that trend will continue. He was playing as the number 10 in the second half of the season. And again, at Liverpool, in fact, he's playing deep as as uh, with, with Fabinho and Henderson gone. I mean, he could even play as the number six. But yeah. even if he plays in an advanced role, it would probably be as, as, as the left-sided eight, which again, does not really board that well in terms of attacking returns. I think there are better options. If you're looking at someone in and around that price range, maybe, you know, you could stretch to someone like Eze, Matoma, Pomo. I think they're better picks uh, in, in that price range because there's also the fact that at some point later, you might want to get other Liverpool players. And I, I just think when you look at the Liverpool players, the, the same point stands true that I don't think McAllister makes the top three at all from, from that squad. Probably not even close to be fair right now. I mean, who knows? If they do bring in a defence midfielder and they look good after a few games, it could be one to, to get in when the fixtures get a little better across the season. But for now, yeah, especially given there are so many great players in a similar sort of price about that kind of cheaper I guess you know six six point five million midfield slot it seems a bit silly to go for McAllister but yeah as you said in some squads and you don't agree okay and now for your final player of the video it is Alexander Isak despite once again having a really strong season last year especially the back end why is he not on your team? Now, I've said that and I'm remembering the Wilson v. Isak debate. Maybe that's to do with it a little bit? It's simply because, I mean, Newcastle's fixtures, as mentioned, aren't great. And even when you look at preseason, Eddie Howe is sort of stuck with one of Wilson or Isak as the centre forward. What we saw at the end of last season was that both were playing, Isak was playing on the left. Wilson was playing as a centre forward, but that hasn't really been the case this season. But they've also bought Harvey Barnes that he's another option on the left. So Isak is pretty much 
in a race of minutes with Milson. So even if he does start, I think he's going to get subbed early. He's at risk of being rotated and of getting reduced minutes. And at that price, I think there are better options. Honestly, you could just go for Watkins, spend a bit more and go for Watkins. That's that's what I would say. Fair enough. So you don't think that he could start left wing? And and like you know, because even he if he does, even, positions. It, no, even if he does, I mean, do, don't you remember last season uh, when he was playing left wing? His, his numbers uh, completely dipped. Don't remind me. <laughs> I don't want to know exactly. about that. Yeah, <laughs> I think we were both kind of burned there, as were a lot of a lot of yeah, FPL managers. Yeah. So yeah, fair enough. Yeah, yeah, it was uh, haunted times. <laughs> Putting it lightly. What I like about the players that you've chosen in this video is that they are all in their own right good fancy options and have been in a lot of teams you know, over the course of FPL. Rams there, for example, was, was pretty template at a point. Trippier was in 100% of teams. Saliba made his way into a few before before Gabriel sort of established himself as, as, the, as the defender with higher goal threat. Bell, a new one, but I like that because he is one that has been in my team a lot throughout preseason, but you're saying now there are better options. And yeah, Isak, despite the fact that we got, we got burned last year, has been in a lot of teams. McAllister as well, in my team for a large portion of last season, but um, yeah, you're saying that all of these, at least to start with, aren't the best options. Okay, Bakar, that is going to do it for this one. Thank you very much for those six suggestions. Guys, if you have players in your own team that you're not entirely sure about, maybe one of the players in your squad right now, Bakar, has just selected, and you're thinking, who do I possibly go for then to replace them? Well, what you need to do is get in the link down below and get your team rated on Fantasy Football Hub absolutely free. It's such an easy way of putting players in and you being told, are they good? Are they bad? Could they be improved? Are they great? Who knows? For example, if you were to put Ramsdale into the team, you wouldn't get 100% team rating because according to the algorithm and Fancy Football Hub's AI, there are better goalkeepers out there. Or are there three better Arsenal players out there? As Bakar mentioned, yes is the answer. If you want to take advantage of that, go down below. Completely for free. The link is there. And if you like what you see, you can sign up to the site. 50% off right now in preseason. And if you do not win your mini league, you get all your money back. A phenomenal offer that you really should take advantage of. Bakar, thank you very much as always. And I will see you guys Pleasure. on the next episode.